Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Today is the seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. We've had a rather long Epiphany season this year, and that's a very good thing because we learn more and more about how Jesus did his ministry. Now, we all know about Martin Luther, um, a great theologian, of course. However, I believe that he was a better pastor than theologian. He really cared for his people and the way that he taught and instructed as a pastor was outstanding. He noted, and you've all heard this, that we are sinner and saint at the same time. And then he had all kinds of short, pithy sayings about what life in the, in the faith was like. One of which is this. He noted about baptism that the old Adam and Eve are hard swimmers. I love that. They fight hard against the waters of baptism until the old sinful self is drowned and Christ puts on us the new robes of his righteousness. Of course, you know that the word righteousness refers to all the good works and love that Jesus earned. Notice who earns it here, Jesus, from God by dying on the cross. He then transferred all that righteousness to us. In this morning's gospel, you'll hear Jesus teaching us the difference between the prescribed life of the Ten Commandments and the described word of the gospel in Jesus. And I'll expand all of that during the sermon. That's what we'll be pondering this morning. We've been talking about all these weeks about the um, updated COVID um, procedures that we're following here at the church. We've kind of gone back to the way it was when all of this started. And there are notes in the bulletin about all of that. So please make sure that you follow those um, out of love for your neighbor and, your, and, and God. We do have a number of birthdays uh, coming up this week and one anniversary. And I put my glasses on because even though they're not exactly the best right now, um, I want to be able to see instead of looking around forever, I want to be able to see who's waving. So um, Caleb Palmer they usually sit in the back there. They're not here. Caleb is not here. Caleb is the, the wonderful guy that comes up to get blessed. And for those um, uh, who remember, uh, he was a most fun character when we did children's messages um, at Holy Cross. Evelyn Backaway. Is Evelyn here? No. Okay. How about Joyce Walter? Oh, where, oh, there. Hi, Joyce. I can actually see your face with my glasses. How about that? And Elvin Walter. Is Elvin here? He usually sits in the back there. No. Okay. All right. So they're all having birthdays. Now, I keep telling you that we're going to come. I'm going to get the words because we hear happy birthday and different versions being sung. So we're going to do that again. But I'm going to put a note in the MailChimp today and, the, and next week's bulletin. I need to get from you the, the words that you use when we sing happy birthday. There will be some differences. But I want to kind of ma amalgamate those and then we'll put them on the screen and we'll be on the same page literally as we sing those. So for Caleb and for those who are watching on the video, um, Caleb Palmer, Evelyn Backaway, Joyce Walter, her birthday is on the 22nd. Alvin Walters is on the 23rd, Caleb Palmer's is on the 20th, and Evelyn Backaway's is on the 21st. Can we sing happy birthday, please? Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. And then Lois and Wes Hart, are they here? Okay, um, are celebrating their anniversary on the 26th, so we'll wish them a happy anniversary as well. All right, if there is someone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary that's not listed in the bulletin, please call the church office so that we can include them. 
This is our gospel music worship service. So we'll have an opportunity to sing some old favorites. Let's stand, please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join together in our opening song. Congregation may be seated. My dear friends in Christ, as we live in the last days, waiting for Jesus to return, we are called to remember his promises and that we are his people. Yet sometimes we forget what he has asked us to do. As God's beloved, we are called to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect being built up by your word and spirit. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to pray in the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to converse with you in prayer and to guide our prayer life according to your word and your will. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to keep ourselves in the love of God. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to remember our baptism. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to embrace the mercy ours and you as we look forward to your return. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to have mercy on those who doubt. Lord Jesus, we confess that we fail to love others as you have first loved us. Forgive us and remember us. As God's beloved, we are urged to share our faith with others. Lord Jesus, we confess that we neglect to share your saving grace with others. My friends in Christ, as Jesus was on the cross, the thief next to him asked, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. As Jesus remembered the thief, he remembers you are his beloved child. 
and he remembers your sin no more as a called and ordained servant of Jesus the Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing the song of praise. Congregation may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, Mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. 
and they came near. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why am I in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning, for some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for star differs from star in glory. So is it with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter.
chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love me, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the sermon song, Jesus Bids Us Shine. Grace, mercy, and God's peace be unto you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. The text is the gospel. Please be seated. <clears throat> My dear friends in Christ, questions, always questions. I want you to think about apple trees for a moment. Here's the question. Do they need to be instructed or commanded to bear apples? Rhetorical question. Wouldn't you agree? Of course not. A healthy apple tree just produces apples. Well, what about those who have been grafted into the vine of life, Jesus our Savior? That's you and me by virtue, if I may be permitted to mix metaphors, of being baptized into the waters of our baptism into Christ. Do we need to be commanded or told to bear the fruit of our faith, the good and pleasing actions which are the result of faith in Jesus? I want you to go ahead and answer that question in your head, in your mind. This is where it gets tricky. Follow the bouncing ball, as it were. In the gospel this morning, you hear, hear Jesus providing us with, well, instructions. He commands us to do the following. To love our enemies, 
to do good to those who hate us, to bless or praise those who curse us, pray for people who abuse us, and I'll and please understand the word abuse here. And when in Jesus' day, they didn't think about the ways that we think of abuse here um, today. But still, abuse in terms of the milder. Can I say that? I think you know what I mean. There are other remedies for other kinds of abuse. Those who make accusations against us. If someone strikes us on our cheek, we are to offer them the other cheek as well. If someone robs us of our cloak, we offer to them our tunic also. We are to give to everyone who begs from us. And if anyone steals from us, we're not to demand our goods back from them. So what are we left to do? We are a people and a society now in 2022 that loves loopholes. We love them so much, we look for them at every opportunity. But before we can even think about doing that, Jesus here reminds us that we don't act in these loving ways to people who are like us, who like us, or who are easy to love. You know, your friends, and the people you like. That's easy, because even the worst of sinners do that. You're nice to the nice. Big deal. You know, you scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. The larger question is this. Would you do any of these things for someone who didn't deserve it? Let me ask you again. Would you do any of these things for someone who didn't deserve it? Actually, that's not even a question to be asked here. In fact, it's not an option because it's a command. Jesus says, I say to you. Now, to help us understand what he's talking about, it's um, important to always understand the context and to whom the words are directed. He is here, of course, speaking to his disciples. These are the, the people who spent time every day learning the faith from him. These are not a group of people without faith. He's speaking rather to those who already confess their sins and, to cling, and who cling to Jesus in repentant faith. In other words, they are smack dab in the middle of their faith. So let's bring it from those disciples and their time to you as a follower of Jesus. You are baptized believers. And so you are in the faith. You confess your sin and cling to Jesus in repentant faith, even as I do as well. Jesus here is appealing to the new person in you, the new Christ who lives in you. Your old Adam and Eve have been put to death. The new Christ in you lives. So for the old Adam and Eve, these are prescriptions for the old Adam and Eve they are prescriptions you all know what prescriptions are of course you get them from the doctor only the doctor can write them Dennis is that correct is it only doctors that can do that okay Let's just say that it's only doctors, and I'm, I'm going to retract all that. The doctor writes the prescription. It's a, think of what's in the prescription. It's a to-do list. It tells you what medication you're going to receive. It tells you the daily or hourly dose, whatever the instructions are, 
to take the medicine, the to-do list for taking the medicine and when to take it and with water, without whatever. A prescription is a to-do list that is given by the doctor to produce, hopefully, a given outcome. That's what a prescription is. These prescriptions that Jesus makes, the commandments, let me say that again, the Ten Commandments are prescription. Do this. But for the new Christ in us, those same words are description. What is, not what is to be. Do you understand the difference? A prescription says, this is what is to be. A description is what is. The Ten Commandments, the words of Jesus here, are prescription to the old Adam and Eve, something to do, but for the new person in Christ, the saint in you, they are what is, description. Follow the bouncing ball. We are holy, we are forgiven, you are holy, you are forgiven. The apple tree produces apples. The apple tree is not a to-do. The apple is an is. But here's something to ponder, and, and this is fascinating stuff. In Hebrew, the Ten Commandments are not called the Ten Commandments. They're called the, the Ten Statements or Words. Originally, the Ten Commandments were not given as commandments. They were given as description, not prescription. They identified for the Israelites what they were because of the covenantal relationship they had with God. I will be your God, you will be my people, and by the way, this is what you will do and what you are. In other words, my friends in Christ, you are a child of God in your baptism. And so these words of Jesus in the gospel describe what you do and that you simply don't do the sinful things. It's what we do and who we are in our baptism. It's who we are and what we do in our baptism. People today speak all the time of how they self-identify. As baptized Christians, we have only one self-identity, our baptismal self-identity based in Christ. Baptized people of God have no other gods. They simply don't abuse God's name. They cherish the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Baptized believers don't murder or lust or are impure in their thoughts, words, and deeds. They don't steal or scheme to get another's stuff. They strive always to put the best construction on everything. They don't slander or make false accusations or covet. They trust that God will provide them with what they need for this body and life and are content with what they have. You see how that's a description? When commanded to do something, the old Adam and Eve in us rebel and respond negatively. We see that all the time. People tell us to do something and we say, nope. I'm not going to do that. Nobody tells me what to do or how to do it. But the new person, the saint, the one who's mortified the old sinful flesh and has the new Christ rise up in him or her, lives by faith. The description of the baptized life in Christ is that we are merciful to others as God has been merciful to us. It's what they do because they are blessed by God purely out of God's grace for us in Christ. So why does Jesus even bother to teach this? Because really, sometimes it's confusing. 
We all know we can't earn our way into heaven by keeping the words. That's not possible. We can't save ourselves regardless of how good our intention might be or how well we think we've checked off the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words. And we think, wow, nine out of ten, that's pretty darn good. Except that one blows the whole thing away. He teaches this way, of course, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. He proclaims the truth of the perfect demands of the words of God, the commandments. He calls us in love to the repentance of sins. And that call comes every Sunday in worship. We begin with the same words in which we began our Christian walk, with the words of invocation said at our baptism. We continue with the confession of sin and the pronouncement of the forgiveness of that sin. We are then reminded that in Christ we are sinner and saint at the same time. In our daily lives, when we remember our baptism every day, we mortify the old sinful self, the old Adam and Eve in us, and the new Adam in us, Jesus, rises up. And now we wear the new robes of his righteousness that covers over our sins. Where do we live? We live in the described Christian life. Not the prescribed to-do list that appeals to the old Adam and Eve. Why? Think about it. Because Jesus fulfilled that prescribed to-do list, the words, the commandments, for us in his perfect obedience to every word of the law. He checked off all of the boxes. He delivered all the deliverables that God demanded. He keeps perfect obedience to the words, the commandments, in our place for us. We now live the described life bearing the good and faith-filled fruits of faith. Apples and apples. God, my friends in Christ, is with you every day as you live out the described life of faith, forgiving you always, loving you as you live by faith as the thank offering for what he gave to you from the cross. Truly we can say, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in him forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing the song of response.
Please be seated. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to, um, before we begin our prayers, I want to share with you some information, and I have permission from everyone that I'm going to mention uh, this morning, I have permission from them to share with you what I'm, sh what I'm going to share. We've been praying for Norm Buecher now for some weeks, and he is now undergoing a combination of chemo and radiation treatments for his cancer. We want to offer prayers of thanksgiving for the ongoing recovery for Lois Klebaum, who had back surgery in January. She's still at home recovering, but is doing well. Also, we've had a number of um, dear friends here at the church who've lost loved ones, and we want to pray for them uh, this morning again, including the family of Lawrence, the brother of Eunice, George Berman's family, Ken Neufeld, and also Aileen Janke and her family as they mourn the passing of Catherine Schmidt. Last Sunday, um, she called me after church to let me know that Catherine had passed away. And so we want to remember um, Aileen and everyone in her family over Catherine's death. There's no funeral planned now, um, and, but they will be having um, something in July. So we'll let you know as that progresses. Let us pray. Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good. Give us such tested faith and bring all things to completion according to your purposes in Christ, the new Adam, who has brought hope to the world. Lord, in your mercy, lead all lay leaders, congregations, pastors, and church workers and missionaries in faithful service to your people with compassion and love. Bless every place where we hear your word and serve our neighbor in Christ's name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, let your love have its way with us. Lead us to expect no self-interested reward, but to love our enemies and serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let forgiveness reign between each of us even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy, comfort all who suffer. Deliver the sick according to your mercy. Here we give you thanks for the healing you have brought us and continue to provide for Lois Klebaum as she recovers from her back surgery. Lord, in your mercy, Sustained by your grace, those troubled in body or soul. And here we especially remember your servants, Linda Anweiler and Norm Buecher. Lord, in your mercy, give your comfort to those who grieve, especially the families of Catherine Schmidt, George Berman, and Lawrence, Eunice's brother. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. 
Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your order and time. When Christ comes and all the dead are raised, re remember us, we pray, among the saints in glory, clothing the perishable with the imperishable and bringing us into eternal life through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We join together in our closing song. Please be seated. Thank you for being with us here in worship and to those who have taken the time to watch the video. Thank you for doing that as well. There are a number of notes in the bulletin uh, that I'm not going to expand upon other than to say, please take a moment to read them. Uh, there is a note about helping hands. Um, so please take a, a moment to read that note. Uh, and all the details are there. We have some exciting news for those of you who are in the Joy Circle. They will be resuming shortly, or I should say it like this. The Joy Circle Bible Study will be resuming shortly. So all the details are in the bulletin. If you're visiting with us this morning and um, would like to take the time, I can meet with you and we can get together over coffee or whatever. Um, at your place, at the church, whatever works, and um, just talk, see what's on your heart and mind. 
And then lastly, please be sure to sign up for the luncheon. <coughs> Excuse me. For the luncheon on... Oh, wow. My mask broke. <coughs> so... Please be sure to sign up for the luncheon on Thursday, February the 24th at 12 noon. All right. I'm going to try this again. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? All right. We're f are we following Lorraine out today? Who are we following out? Oh, sorry. Okay, Renata is going to lead you out this morning. Just a reminder to exit out through that door and then out through the side door. However, I'm going to make a, an audible here. If you're not comfortable going down that step outside, then can we ask you to exit through the hallway and then out that door? But only for those who are not comfortable stepping down the pad that's on the outside. Go in peace.